My dear Lauren and Jason, this is a very special, wonderful moment in time for me personally to officiate at Jason's bar mitzvah ceremony many moons ago and other B'nai mitzvah in your family through tzuras and through simchas. Now to be able to have the joy of this moment is truly a sublime joy. What you've told me, this is a sacred moment not only for the two of you, but certainly for your families. Not only are the two of you best friends, but your parents have also become chaverim, close friends, which truly adds the joy of this moment. The third great joy is celebrating the two of you, formalizing your love and commitment. On the surface, what a gorgeous couple you are. Who would have thought the two Jews would meet at Frostburg U and become friends, <laughs> fall in love, and decide to live the rest of their lives together? Pretty amazing, but you're both pretty amazing. I had two short, pithy thoughts that I hope will be meaningful for two amazing souls at this moment. First, from this morning's Torah portion. Israel was commanded when they entered the Promised Land to recite formal prayers when they brought their first fruits at Shavuot Pentecost and their tithes at Sukkot Tabernacles. What do we learn from these beautiful pieces of liturgy? First, we learn to know where we've come from. The prayers say we came from a people who were wanderers and slaves, and now we enjoy incredible freedom. We came as a people 3,000 years ago from nothing, and many of our families came from very little 100 or so years ago, and now we have it so good. Let's give thanks, therefore, and share our blessings with those in need. That's what the prayer formulas talk about. Know who you are, know how blessed you are, and share God's gifts. Knowing the two of you, your relationships with your family, your background, certainly Jason and Jewish youth movements, and Laura and the kindness and caring that flows so easily through you, I have no doubt that that sense of gratitude and willingness to give will always be part of who you are and how you live in the world, and maybe more importantly, how you treat each other. My second very quick thought flows from the reality of being just a little more than a week before Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. We will, of course, pray for a good, prosperous, healthy year, oh, so, that, so that much of our thoughts will be on what we must do, though, to ensure a spiritually healthy year. We don't get a clean slate every year, but we do get a new start. You don't get a clean slate tonight either, but you do begin in a new way to live together from this moment on. I'm truly confident that the passion for everything you infuse into your life, Jason, to pursue your dreams and achieve them will be a wonderful part of your relationship. And Lauren, your talent to nurture and to express your devotion, all those small, wonderful acts of kindness, will see you enjoy together years of laughter and great times. So on behalf of family, friends, and personally, Wish you all the blessings of life together, great honeymoon in the Caribbean, good health, <laughs> contentment, no rush but a bunch of little glats to fill your home up, and of course a large measure of peace and let us all say, Amen. 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 I don't know, I'm nervous. A bunch of little glats. The last part of the Jewish wedding ceremony is the Sheva Brachot, the seven blessings. They contain at the start the blessing over wine once again, the symbol of joy, three blessings over just life and creation, then three blessings for the couple. The last of them reads in the English as follows, and I'll be chanting through them in the Hebrew. Praise to you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates joy and gladness, brides and grooms, pleasure, song, delight, laughter, love, harmony, peace and companionship. O Lord our God, may there ever be heard in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem voices of joy and gladness, voices of brides and grooms, the jubilant voices of those joined in marriage under the chuppah, the voices of people feasting and singing. Praise to you, Lord, who caused the groom and bride to rejoice together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Barei pri ha-gafet Amen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Shehakol bara lichvodo Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Yotzer ha-dam Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam
Since both of you have joined voluntarily in the ceremony which binds you together in marriage, abiding by the laws of the state of Maryland and acting in accordance with the laws of most of the people of Israel, you, Jason, and you, Lauren, are now husband and wife. The last traditional act of a Jewish wedding ceremony is, of course, the breaking of the glass. We interpret it to mean a remembrance of the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem, that we live in an imperfect world, too often filled with sickness, hatred, war, and suffering. We pray for the Messianic age when the glass will be whole again, when the joy of a wedding like this one will be experienced each and every day of our, day of our lives. I want to go to the stage. Mazel tov! Come on, just to let you know. Oh, 